I think it goes without saying that the next president of the United States, whether it's the incumbent President Obama or uh, one of his Republican challengers, is going to face uh, unprecedented change in the Middle East. Uh, we have seen critical allies like uh, Hosni Mubarak uh, fall from power and uh, other allies under political pressure. As a result, the kind of regional political order that uh, Mubarak, King Abdullah of Jordan, King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, the Moroccan uh, king, and others helped to create that made it relatively easier and relatively less expensive for the United States to pursue its interests in the Middle East uh, has t been turned over. To be sure, there, there hasn't been an uprising in Jordan or Saudi Arabia, but if King Abdullah looks around the region and sees uh, other leaders uh, under pressure, uh, Mubarak uh, facing charges, uh, he is unlikely, along with others who have been part of the American uh, moment in the Middle East, he's unlikely uh, to pursue uh, similar kinds of policies. Uh, that's not to suggest that these uprisings were about the United States, but certainly, and in particular in Egypt's case, opposition to uh, the Mubarak regime was based in part on a strategic alignment with the United States that many Egyptians felt was not in Washington's interests. And I think this, this alters the calculus of uh, uh, Arab politicians. And then, of course, in places where there have been uh, relatively free and, and, and pretty good elections, it has uh, brought to power uh, groups whose uh, vision and interests uh, don't necessarily coincide with the United States. And here, of course, I'm talking about Islamist groups like Ahnada in Tunisia or uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. That's not to suggest that there are, isn't a possibility for the United States to continue to have good relations with these countries. I don't believe theocracy is the future for Tunisia or Egypt, but that uh, the leaders of these groups uh, don't share Washington's interests in the region, and as a result, are likely to put pressure on the bilateral relationship. And that's particularly problematic when it comes uh, to the U.S.-Egypt uh, relationship. This is the very, very changed world that the next president of the United States is going to have to confront. Uh, we have uh, stood by and applauded uh, and been excited by Arabs uh, taking matters into their own hand and throwing off decades of authoritarian rule in the name of ideas and principles that animate Americans here at home. But uh, the outcome of more democratic, open, if not democracies in the Middle East are, are likely to be uh, more challenging for the United States. Um, it's true that our policy of authoritarian stability that has preceded this era of change in the region uh, was one in which uh, it may not have conformed to our values but certainly uh, relationships with uh, the Mubaraks, Ben Ali's, uh, Abdullah's of the world uh, helped Washington achieve its interests in the Middle East.